okay, we're actually live this time. Woo, we got that going. No yeah. problem, no big deal, yeah. not a thing. Yeah. Oh, it is a thing, but it's, a, it's an okay thing. So, we've got a great show for you guys today. I'm here, Luke's here, and... Uh, John might be making an appearance. Really? For one specific topic. Oh, do we have another we legal have, topic? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see. You know, those yeah. are actually some of the most interesting ones for me because me he'll, too. Yeah. he'll go <laughs> off on something where he's like, I'll have some misconception or whatever, and he'll go off and he'll be like, well, actually... It works this way blah, or blah. In, in this specific state or yeah, whatever. It turns heck. out that I got an education for a reason <laughs> and you probably should have gone to school and, you know... Oh, no, I disagree with that. For your specific really? use case, not for everybody. Really? Okay, you know what's funny is I actually had lunch with uh, a local content producer Yeah. Um, earlier this week. Like, she she does, like, this kind of vertically integrated content production for uh, business professionals. Okay. That's, like, about stocks and, like, business tips and okay. stuff like that. And apparently their program actually airs uh, among other things uh, on one of Fox's things, like a Fox business thing. Okay. And then also on like Air Canada flights, like very old media. Yeah. You know, like relationships with, you know, national airlines and like yeah. network TV. Yeah. And um, anyway, so she wanted to have lunch. I had no idea what she wanted. Uh, basically, we did like a studio tour. Taryn yeah. was instructed by someone who works with her doing some stuff over at BCIT. And the funny thing is, Taryn brought me into their studio so that I could see how, like, a proper company does things, and maybe we should have edit suites, and maybe we should have this, and maybe we should have that. And it turned out that in much the same way as us, they learned as they went, and there were a lot of things they did better than us, and there are a lot of things we do better than them. <laughs> so that was enlightening and did they, fun. Did they do edit suites? Uh, they do have edit suites. Okay. That was what he wanted me to see. What he didn't want me to see was all the other kind of janky stuff, like the fact that they literally have footage archived on betas still. Whoa. Yeah, but remember, broadcast TV, that was a thing. But you'd think you'd move it. A lot more recently, where you would actually okay, be fair. submitting finished projects by yeah. mailing a Betamax <laughs> tape, or not a Betamax, sorry, it's like, they, they were two different standards. Yeah. Like the, the, the broadcast tape version and like the one that competed with VH. Anyway, the, yeah. point, the point is, they still have like a shelf, and this is after they cleaned up, they have like a shelf of betas, and I'm like, you're great. <laughs> and uh, I was telling them about the vault and stuff, and they're like, yeah, that would be pretty cool. And Taryn's like, yeah, that's pretty useful. Maybe I don't have an editing suite, but I do have that. <laughs> uh, anyway, the point is, um, she asked me to have lunch with her, and um, she, uh, she didn't really tell me what it was about. It turned out she wanted me to talk some sense into her son. Okay. Who had this idea in his head that he was going to... He has two videos uploaded to YouTube. And, you know, you probably get this all the time, too, right? People being like, how do I be a successful oh, always. YouTuber? Especially on my... Not to plug it, but on especially on my stream. Yeah, yeah especially yeah. on your streams. Because, like, you have... Which a, is hilarious, because my stream sucks. And, like, nobody watches it. And people ask me how to be a successful streamer. And I'm like, you think I know? <laughs> I'm glad you said that, because I was going to crap on your stream a little bit. Yeah, no, it's terrible. I was yeah. going to be like, yeah, like, and your stream's not even... That I do big it or for anything. fun and charity. Like, yeah. But you have a lot more success streaming than, like, you know how it's like the first thousand subscribers on YouTube is the hardest? Right. You've passed that first handful of and Twitch just subscribers. never took a further step. And <laughs> phoned it in the rest of the way. Yeah. And, <laughs> but you clearly know enough to know a thing that people would ask you about it. Anyway, right. so, so usually when people ask that question, it starts with, yeah, I just uploaded my first video or I just did my first stream. What would you recommend? And the guy's like, yeah, so I want to do like a um, like a, a fitness clothing line, and I want to do like a fitness lifestyle oh. vlog, and uh, and and way, it, way, to, way to compete against everyone. Yeah, yeah. And it was funny because his mom's giving me additional details. Like, yeah, he wants me to pay for plane tickets so he can like travel interesting places for his lifestyle <laughs> vlog. Of course. And so yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. All right, bro. One. I'm not gonna side with your mom and and just say straight up, stay in school. Could be a decent strategy. Because I didn't... Nothing. Don't worry about it. Really? 
<laughs> I mean, if she's got plane tickets, go all around the world. Okay. All right. <laughs> I thought you were going somewhere else with that. No, 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 no totally, no, definitely. definitely. <laughs> <You're gross. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, so anyway, continue. yeah. I'm not siding with his mom directly because, like, the whole school thing didn't work out very well for me. But I was also like, on the other hand, dude, if you're going to succeed as a social media influencer, you won't succeed unless you have A, the passion, yeah. and B, the drive slash work ethic yeah. to do it on the side. Yeah. So if you don't have anything better to do, then stay in school, but don't lose track of that this should be your full-time side project. Yeah. And that was sort of the advice that I gave. And the guy, like, he looked like I, you know, punched him in the stomach. Well, like, and, and, and I was bigger than I am. <laughs> my but, biggest uh, thing, oh my goodness, thank you, Nick. Uh, my biggest thing is like... The, the, hey, Nick, the, Asus should be paying me for this. Yeah. I've been drinking out of this bottle on WAN show for years. Yeah. You call out that person who uh, you called out in the super fun. Yeah, okay, maybe I'll do that. I don't think he controls any budget spending there, so I mean, it won't do me any good, but that's fine. Yeah. Um, my, so, my... Hey, Zeus, pay us the money for product placement, okay? See, you can never get money for product placement if you have product placement all over Already. your stuff for free anyway. Yeah. Yeah. People are, everyone looks at it and they just go, why? So, why would I pay for we, this? You're going to do it anyway. Have we ever done a successful straight up product placement deal? Mm, I don't think so. We tried to do something with a smartwatch, like with Pebble, I think, like a thousand years ago, and then Pebble wouldn't even send us review samples, yeah. and then they got bought. Yeah. So that's about how <laughs> successful we've been. <laughs> yeah. Like. Maybe they should have done that, that marketing spot. Anyway. Um, okay, so my thing, especially when yeah. people are in his specific position, yeah. where you're like, he's uploaded two videos. Yes. My whole thing is like, I don't care, and you shouldn't. Yeah. Upload way more. That's yeah. your big problem right now. Is you just need to do it a whole bunch. Yeah. Because there's going to be learn things that you're missing. Learn from doing it. Doing yeah. it. D d doing it. Yeah. There yeah. You go. Learn yeah. from doing it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway. Like uh, you know. <laughs> All right. Let's roll the intro. <laughs> The, uh, the land show announcement went up. Oh, it did. Look at that. LTX! I'm actually getting a lot more confident that this is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, the case toss was really fun. We put, uh, we put, actually, we put Colton's wife in charge of the event. Yeah. Because previously we had Colton in charge um, because they had such a wonderful and well organized wedding. And then we found out that, of course, he had nothing to do with it, so we hired his wife. <laughs> and she is doing a bang-up job so far. There is going to be a lot of fun stuff to do. That's also, cool. fresh books. Yay! Woo! Fresh books! And EK Water Blocks. Now, hold on a second. Actually, you know what? I'll get into it in the sponsor spot, but that is not as crazy as it sounds. Yeah. That whole thing that I just put on the screen there. Uh... Okay, so first uh, first topic. You know what? Let's jump right into the good stuff today. The original article here is from PC Perspective, and it was posted on the forum by E. Kin and our buddy, Mr. The One and Only, Ryan Shroutastic, got his hand on an AMD Vega Frontier Edition. And how he did this, I can tell you. He bought it. The same as we had to. Ours is in the mail. Okay. AMD is not sampling Frontier Edition. Why might they not? Oh, actually, you know what's really funny is I didn't even read the article. Purchased directly from a reseller rather than being sampled from AMD. Um, so why didn't they want to sample this to press? Well, there are a number of... Uh, potential explanations for that. Can you think of any? Uh, well, they've been moving this way for a while. Uh, okay, that's true. On One, the professional they, cards, yeah, the fire fire class cards. And actually, kind of both sides have okay. been moving this way a little bit. Nvidia has still been on their gaming cards, have been pushing really hard. But AMD, for a little while now, has been saying that they don't want to give out as many reviewer sample cards because they want to do more seeding into the community. And Nvidia did not sample the Titan XPP. Yeah. We have a video coming featuring it soon, but we borrowed it from somebody. And they're trying to line this card up more against those. That's true. Okay. 
That's okay. my main. Now I'm going to contribute a potential reason. Okay. Uh, potential reason number two. Yields are very low, and they don't have a lot of them. Yeah. Okay, so that might be another one. You got another one? Um, I doubt this is a thing, mm -hmm. but even mm -hmm. maybe... Everyone is buying every single card everywhere for AMD right now because ah, of mining. Ah, okay, okay. So they, like, know that it will sell immediately. So price. Yeah. So rather than giving away literally money in the bank, which when you're AMD... And, like, with their press right now, they might not even need reviews of this thing because everyone talking about AMD stuff is super popular right now. Yep. And very positive right now. Yep. So it's going to be popular and positive anyways. And then everyone's buying it anyways because of mining. So they might not even need the marketing that they would get from sending it. Okay, which brings us then to reason number four, which I actually think might be the most likely. Vega does not look like it is going to set the world on fire. And AMD, and for that matter, um, I mean, who hasn't done this? But AMD has demonstrated in the past uh, a, 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 a lower level of eagerness to seed products that they don't think are going to be as exciting in an attempt to, if not limit independent coverage of them, at least not spend money on getting independent coverage of them. So let's give a, a brief outline of what it is. So the Vega Founders Edition is not explicitly aimed mm -mm. at gamers. Frontier Edition, sorry. I did that a lot on yeah. the announcement video. Like, really, you guys? I actually might have another walk in the park coming on AMD's naming schemes, because I'm getting real fed up. <laughs> um, so the Vega Frontier let's just, Edition... just, like, almost sort of copy everyone else. Yeah. Not explicitly aimed at gamers. Uh, like NVIDIA Titans, we shouldn't expect the best performance per dollar. Okay. Uh, gaming results, though, and this is this is kind of uh, this kind of throws up some warning flags, because with gaming results between a GTX 1070 and a 1080, priced at a thousand dollars for the 300 watt version, this tells us a couple things. Number one is that, and that's the air cooled one, and fifteen hundred dollars for the 375 watt water cooled one. That tells us we are pretty close to the, the limit of what this chip is capable of. And there, there isn't a lot of magic sauce. We did a video kind of covering this a little while ago. It was a holy Shiite episode that we did um, where we were like, uh, $6,000 graphics card, we game on it. The amount of R&D that goes into building a GPU is such that you should be very surprised if there is a specific product created for Quadro versus GeForce. Yeah. It's the same product. It's the same silicon. And in much the same way, AMD's Frontier Edition silicon will be the same silicon, might, give or take. It might be set up and utilized or whatever in different ways, and the memory paired with it might be different. Functional and, units here. And, yeah. And the logic on board might be a little bit different. A tweak here and there. Yeah. But the amount of money involved in building a GPU is incredible. So... If you are expecting, then, the gaming versions of Vega to come in and crush the GTX 1080, let alone the 1080 Ti, you are setting yourself up for a major disappointment. And I'm sure that the AMD fans in Twitch chat are freaking out right now. I'm specifically not looking at it because I really don't care. I'm laying down some reality here, and that's the way it's going to be. There is some driver optimization to be done, and AMD has been notorious for this. The 5870 is a perfect example of a product that managed to get faster enough through driver releases that when they rebadged it, it ended up being... It ended up not looking that bad when you looked at launch reviews of the rebadged one versus launch reviews of the original one. But you can't expect more than... It's not going to double in speed. Driver optimizations will give you a little bit, but the silicon is, by and large, not going to change. Yeah. The clock speed is, by and large, not going to change because it's a 300-watt part at 999. AMD's closest thing to a competitor is probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of a GTX 1070 to 1080 in terms of performance. So 
AMD may not have abandoned the high end, but it does look like, because they're not even talking about like a higher end yeah. Vega architecture product right now. Not at all. They do seem to have abandoned, whether by choice or whether by strategy, the enthusiast, the very extreme high end. I like using Rise of the Tomb Raider as a standard benchmark. We use it in a yep. lot of different things. It scales things. really well, CPU it and does. GPU, yep. and, and multi-GPU even. And the Vega FE only managed to beat out the 1070 by about a 4 to 5 percent lead. Which is, at that price, like, really not great. So, um... It's not a gaming card. No, it's not. And we don't know anything about what pricing of Vega gaming, like, R, what are they going to call it? R9 Vega or something? I don't, I don't know. I don't remember yeah. what they're going to call it. But, um... A lot of times you can get a rough idea of how it'll perform in things that aren't gaming by using games. Yes. They're not they're not completely unrelated. Yeah. So. But with that said, I believe uh it's is it FP16 something there's there's some more um more professional grade features that make it more comparable to Quadros than a straight gaming yeah. card would yeah. that will perform much better and may make Vega Frontier Edition very interesting for workstation users because it will be similar in terms of performance to a P5000 Quadro, but at about half the price of that. So at the very least, if you if you were wondering about buying like this crazy tiered AMD card for gaming, like maybe don't. Maybe that's what we know so far. Or at the very least, like wait until the gaming version of it arrives, and we yeah. can see kind of what we're what we're dealing with here. Even PC Purse conclusion is like title marked conclusion dot 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 for now or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So like yeah, I don't think it's a huge deal. Um, yeah. I mean, unless it's not you were looking into this card as a gamer's perspective, but that's not what it is. No, and it's not how it's priced. Yeah. I am shocked that they had the guts to do a water-cooled card again. Like, yeah. that looked like a desperation tactic last time. The Fury X was a commercial failure, utter commercial failure. And Could you buy, a f I don't think you could buy a Fury X air-cooled though, right? No. So this is a versioning thing. Yeah, they so have an air-cooled one. There's, it's this a lot is lower Fury wattage. and Fury X again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's fair. <sighs> Yeah, we've got people in the chat. I'm finally, I'm finally looking at the chat. I've decided to subject myself to that. Uh, Agecore one two three is like AMD fans equal <laughs> Nvidia fans, and then there's some emoji I can't see because it's too small. And yeah, I the mean, recent war has been. I talked about this a little bit on the last show too. The recent war has been kind of interesting because everything that people are fighting about are these like outside of the tiers of what they're probably shopping for products. It is which kind of is a funny so thing, isn't it? Weird. Uh, like, the percentage of people that are actually interested in buying a thousand dollar graphics card? Because if AMD can get like, this priced what? right, then, you know, it, yeah, it'll stomp all over a 1060, but if it consumes, like, 300 watts... Yeah. Uh, the, I don't know, well, you know what? How about this? Why don't we cross that bridge when we get to it? In the meantime, that's what we know for yeah. now. Also, our Vega Frontier Edition is coming, so we're gonna run all of our own numbers and make our own video and... You can probably save yourself the trouble of watching it by reading Shrout's review, but <laughs> am I allowed to say that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, who's gonna, who's gonna fire me? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Linus, you're fired! <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Crap, I'll have to go to my other job. Yeah, I'll have to go work, uh, work for Float Plane Club, like yeah. you. Yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> yeah, would you hire me? Yeah. Yes! Yeah, yeah, I would. You'd be pretty expensive, but all right. I feel like that investment would pay itself off. So the original article for our next news story is Overclock3D.net. AMD announces their new Ryzen Pro series of desktop CPUs, and I, I gotta confess, I was a little bit confused initially by the announcement of Ryzen Pro because I kind of went, well, what makes a processor? Pro, other than being a processor. Nothing. I get nothing for processor. Sorry, I'm replying to something in the chat. I hate you. <laughs> can you? There, can I pretend that that <laughs> laugh was for my joke? The best part too is you made a joke and I didn't laugh because I was answering a question of someone going, "Really, Luke? Laughing again? Everything's funny." 
And I'm just like, you know what? I enjoy things. And I find things funny. Maybe we do WAN show at the, alone. at the end of the day on Friday so we can kind of loosen up a little bit. Yeah. Like, hang out for the first time this week because we almost never see each other. This week was pretty good. This week we, was pretty we, good. There was a few yeah. times, yeah. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Daisy underscore HK. Yeah. I just enjoy laughing at things. Yeah. You know what? Laughter is the best medicine. I even got called Unless out by that. Unless you need chemotherapy, in which case chemotherapy is probably the best medicine. You might need to go do... Yeah. Yes. So laughter is the best medicine for... If you're not actually sick. If you're not actually sick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. So I was sitting there going, what makes something a processor? And my... <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Jeez. And my That's in, rough. my initial answer to that was the obvious one, ECC support. Okay, yeah, okay. Okay, so yeah. you can use server memory that um, has automatic error corrections that are going on the fly in case there's like, you know, a solar flare that flips a bit or whatever and you your your freaking, you know, FreeNAS ZFS array gets corrupted irreparably. Like that that's a pro level feature. But the funny thing about that is that Ryzen has ECC yeah. support. They didn't fuse it off the way that Intel does on all of their consumer chips, even ones that cost a thousand dollars, which I, I think is unreasonable because yeah. they're worried about um, they're worried about cannibalizing their enterprise chips, their Xeons. Um, so what they do do though, and this didn't occur to me initially, is they offer Windows 10 enterprise security support. AES 128-bit memory encryption and Ooh. a longer warranty. With that said, a 36-month warranty is what they used to offer anyway. But <laughs> hey, okay. I mean, sure. It's, it's also a processor. So. Whether it's AMD or Intel, they're both pretty good about their CPUs, not just like randomly failing. How many times have you had a processor die? I had an Optron 165 die. I deserved it. Was it your fault? I had it. How do I put this? Um, so, yes, I'm gonna no, take hold this on. As yes. No, I didn't like drop it on the floor. But you like overvolted the but tar off of it. Just can you just relax, okay? Yeah. Okay. So I had it chilled to minus twenty five degrees. Okay. okay, I'm not gonna finish the story. Okay. okay. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. So, so, so it was not really the processors. So fault. I had that coming. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So zero so far. Do you have yes. any more? Um, no. I'm also at zero. So, so like it's probably fine. The Pro series will come. Okay. Now to be clear, I have had like test bench chips die. Was that the the old school chiller? Yes. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's the chiller. We haven't yeah. thrown it away. I might resurrect it someday just for lols. You should do that as a video. It would be a great... Actually, it would be a great video. That would be really Get fun. Get Alex to help you with it and like yeah. modernize it a little bit. Yeah. Get it in a cooler box than Get just... Get Proto like... Case to do something yeah. up for us? Yeah. Nice. I like this project. That would actually be really sick. And then we could use it like on our test benches and stuff. That would be really sick. We'd have to do up a new block for it because the block yeah, I used yeah, to yeah. use for it was a Danger Den TDX and that was out of pure maybe, cheapness. Maybe you can follow up the like terrible heatsink guides with like a we professionally designed our own heatsink. Terrible chiller guide. <laughs> I, I would love, personally I would love watching that. That would be great. Um, so I was actually using highly not recommended. So Some with... people are asking for the story but keep going. With antifreeze um, and water as coolant because once you're going down to... No, no, sorry that's not what you use. You use a windshield de-icer. So oh, okay. that's actually like an alcohol-based coolant. Yeah. So I was using that at like sub-25 degrees. Actually, a little more than that on the actual coolant. It was about <laughs> sub-35. I was using that in an acrylic block. Oh. So you leaked onto no, it? No, no, I didn't. I didn't. No, okay. that survived. No, no, I'm just saying that that block still exists. We still have it. But it is so That's full of micro cracks yeah. around the fittings yeah. that it is terrifying. So I was yeah. using it out of cheapness. Because I just assumed it would have cracked at that point. Whatever block I used in this contraption had to have, like, industrial glue put on it so that I could put all of my, like, neoprene insulation and crap all over it. And um, so it was basically a write-off. And that was at a time that, so A, well, you're supposed to use an all-metal block. Yeah. Preferably all the same metal. 
Yeah. Um, so that the expansion and contraction yeah. isn't of is, different metals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so pr preferably you're supposed to do that. But those back then I would have been buying like a water cool. I think it was called the heat killer 3.0 or something like that okay. or whatever it would have been at the time. Were those like they were like 150 bucks? All just silver not you could get silver ones but even the copper ones were like they were like 80 or 90 euro or something <laughs> stupid like that so yeah. um so i was using like a crazy dumb thing anyway if we if we used the partnerships that i now have with like proto case to do like a really nice enclosure for it and like cool. get ek to build us something like custom or something for it oh that'd be sick that would be a sick project and something that we could like pull out with pride on the test bench when we want like yeah you know what you know what because we have more resources now we have I'm more writers man. and all yeah. that kind of stuff something that i would love for us to do is back when it was just you and me we did some factory tours Yes. We did Omron, we did Sennheiser, we did, uh, I feel like there was another one. I'm uh, yeah, one. we did Cherry. Cherry. How yeah. could you forget Cherry? I, the, like my, yeah. That was where the, we the popped one. our factory tour Cherry. Yeah, it was. It was great. I think, I think I missed it because Sennheiser and Cherry were on the same trip. They okay. were. Yeah. yeah. Um, but now, going through, like maybe spending a couple days there, mm -hmm. and like going through each station through like the design process of a water block. Go through like the guy that cads out the original files. You and, know like, what? We we tried to do EK. Oh. We actually were thinking about doing it on the same trip as Cherry and Sennheiser. Oh. We couldn't get it worked out because the budget required for all the travel and because we do charge for those. That yeah. is a sponsored yeah. type of project for us. Um, they couldn't make that work at the time. But now that they're going a little bit more mainstream, and actually that might work. Uh, I'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we do our ad spot for WAN Show today. That's the yeah. UK spot. Yeah. Uh, maybe we could make it work because I would love to that see would be their shop. That would be super cool. Their shop is sick. Yeah, and like, like if you can actually see like what goes into designing and building a product. And EK actually manufactures everything, so they're not like all water cooling companies that are designing somewhere and then outsourcing to China. Yeah. Um, EK actually owns their own manufacturing. So I, I, it would be pretty cool to see that. That'd be pretty sick. Um, okay, what else What else do we got? We okay, Ryzen Pro. Um, right, we were talking about that. Okay, Ryzen Pro offers yet another advantage over Intel's i3 series, especially because those lack uh, Intel V Pro. So um, basically AMD is putting more pressure on Intel. And this time it's on the like professional and business feature side, which is definitely something that I can appreciate because, I mean, you were talking about this the other day. Security and encryption is going to become one of those things where like we might be sitting in a golden age of hardware right now where manufacturers are waking up to the need for encryption on their devices. Apple has to a yeah. great extent. Yeah. And governments haven't outlawed it yet. Yeah. So think about this. Like, 10 years from now, getting your hands on a Ryzen Pro might be, like, a thing. Yeah, for your, like, encrypted computer. If you want encrypted memory. Yeah. Think wow. about that for a minute. Like, I'm not trying to go all tinfoil hat, but it's no secret that yeah. governments around the world There's are... articles in this WAN show that we haven't talked about yet that are exactly in line with this. Yeah, it's going to be a, it's gonna be an interesting time. Um, AMD accidentally reveals Ryzen 3 details. Wah, wah. Is this like a quote-unquote accidentally, or is this legitimately accidental? I can never tell with those guys, to yeah, be honest with fair. you. Sometimes I suspect that it's quote-unquote accidentally. Other times I believe them that it's not accident. I don't know. Um, anyway, originally posted by Ryan Smith over at Anand Tech. Well, gee, if you were paying close attention to this morning's announcement of AMD's new Ryzen Pro SKUs, then you likely noticed something interesting. The non-X Pro chips all have the same performance specifications as their standard consumer counterparts. Specifically, both of the non-X Pro SKUs with existing Ryzen 5 and 7 counterparts have the same core counts, clock speeds, and TDPs. As for the final two Ryzen Pro 3 SKUs, well, they inadvertently showed their hand when it comes to the forthcoming Ryzen 3. Okay. So, I mean, we are making some assumptions here, but it looks like... Uh, they've inadvertently revealed the Ryzen 3 1300 and 1200 specs. So the Ryzen 3 looks like it'll be a quad-core CPU without SMT. So that's four threads rather than eight, which, in my opinion, is what entry-level chips should have been at this point for a few years now. Uh, that's... Give me one quick second. Sorry. You're good. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. 
okay. Is everything okay? Yeah, it is. Does everything seem okay to you guys? Tell you what, why don't we talk about Ryzen 3 later? Why don't I just do the sponsor spots? So, uh, boom! Fresh books! Uh, f oh, right, I have, I have notes. I always go off script and I always get in trouble. So FreshBooks is the super simple to use invoicing tool that actually does a lot more than just help you create and send slick looking invoices. You can keep track of your time with their timesheet function, manage your expenses, and keep track of who owes you money, even going as far as to be able to tell you once your client has looked at your invoice for the first time. What's really neat is their mobile app has all the functionality of the desktop version, so you can take FreshBooks with you wherever you go. And if you have any questions about FreshBooks or how to use it, you can reach out to their support staff where you literally call them and someone, like a person, picks up the phone and is like, hello, no one is available to take your call. Please leave it. No, I'm just kidding. Not that other part. They pick up the phone and they say hello and you can actually talk to them. No escalations, phone trees, return calls, just answers. So visit freshbooks.com slash when. If you're a small business owner uh, or you or a freelancer and you want to start spending your time working instead of spending your time working out how to use complicated accounting software. Also, FreshBooks is our title sponsor for LTX. Yeah. Linus Tech Expo 2017. Where it's you can see this. Oh, I wasn't gonna acknowledge it. Everyone's been talking about it in the chat and I was just gonna completely well, that ignore it. was also them. just, you are also here. Oh. Yeah, fine, we'll acknowledge it. So that'll be there. But I'm not going to tell you any more about it. Oh. Other than that, uh, that might be a Linus Tech Tips logo. There. Yeah, yeah, that's all we'll say. That's all we'll say about it. So that'll be there. Um, we're probably, hopefully, going to have... Okay, uh, I'm kind of tipping my hand a little bit here. But LTX is going to be freaking sick. Um, we're the... going to have 16K gaming there. Ooh. The Case Toss K, I don't, I don't know... Uh, it's on float plane right now. Yeah, it's Channel Super Fun on if, Float Plane right yeah, now. Yeah, it's, it's not on Channel Super Fun on YouTube. But we did like a, a case toss to so, show what it might be like while you're at LTX. Yep. And it was actually tons of fun. Yep. Really um, cool. There's going to be other examples of booths. Bo uh, there's going to be other types of booths, like guess how many CPUs are in a jar, kind of like the old jelly bean thing, Rocket League in real life, uh, video editing tips from Taryn. Yep. We're literally yep. going to take his workstation and... Like transplant it over there yes. and just let him keep working. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and he'll be like talking to people about what he's doing. So it's July 29th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And you can get your ticket through the forum or at the link in the video description, which I'm going to go ahead and drop in the Twitch chat right now. Twitch Plays Pokemon was like, are we just skipping 8K? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay, other sponsor, EK Waterblocks. Heck oh. yeah. So this, my friends, is EK's foray into the mainstream, but unlike their previous Predator lineup of, thank you, trying to make water cooling more mainstream, like trying to be more like an AIO, but better, like expandable, this one is much, much less expensive. So okay. what they've done, and this sounds crazy on first glance, but we actually have a review, which, by the way, we completed. It's not uploaded yet, but we completed. We evaluated this thing before we did any sponsor spots for it. We have a review coming, um, and it's pretty positive. Uh, this thing is really good. By making all the blocks out of aluminum instead of copper, they have lowered the cost. They have lowered the machining time, which inherently lowers the cost. They have retained the expandability, and they have retained most of the performance of a full copper custom loop. The drawback is that you can't mix EK's A-series products with their normal products because there would be a risk of galvanic corrosion. I don't know why Siri started <laughs> taking off there. But the point is, the A120, the A240, and the A240G, especially personally, I don't think this is in my, uh, <clears throat> I don't think this is in my sponsor notes, but especially the A240 and the A240G look like a fantastic value is for the, custom liquid cooling. Is it the G? Does that mean it includes like graphics card? It does. It okay. includes a 1060 to Titan XP Founders Edition compatible block. Cool. 
So it looks pretty darn good. And unlike other AIOs, it includes actual fittings, it includes tubing that you can change out for something else, it includes Vardar fans, oh. so very good fans, yeah. and it includes um, a like, ugh, like a custom grade pump and then tube reservoir combo. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. So looking looking pretty good. So you can check that out over at genie, G-E-N-I dot us slash EK Fluid Gaming. I'll drop that in the Twitch chat as well. Okay. All right. Yeah, no, I know. I got the notification from Tyler that he was clearing the fridge out in 15 minutes. Oh. And I got it 21 minutes ago. Oh, and he was going to throw away your food. Which I, like, don't even normally store food here because I just have, like, Soylent, which you don't throw out. Which I have yeah. for like breakfast and stuff, but there's I had a bunch of food here that my girlfriend cooked, and she's the least domestic person ever and doesn't cook, but she's very excited about this stuff right now. So if it all got thrown out, that would have been a very bad. Um, right. Yeah, that would have been bad. Bad scene. So I solved that. Good. Every, everything's fine. So you solved that by fishing it out of the garbage can, putting it back in the container, no, and not telling I think, her. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I, th I think in in Tyler's regular style, he said fifteen minutes, and it's probably like half an hour. Okay. So it just wasn't done yet. Okay. Uh, we've got people asking why I'm using an iPhone. And to be clear, what I mean by that is he gave oh. people a grace period, not that he's delayed. Uh, I'm using an iPhone because I actually don't really care right now. Um, between Android and iOS, and I had to give the shooters my S8, which I was using as my daily driver, um, to do comparative B-roll against the OnePlus 5. And then I, I just haven't gotten around to putting my SIM back in the S8. I do intend to go back to the S8. How do you feel about the notifications? They're both awful in different ways. Okay. Because that was yeah. like one thing that I hated about iOS when I used it for a fairly short period of time was the notifications. Yeah. Um, the problem is that Samsung in the, I think it was the Marshmallow update. I don't use Nougat, Nougat update. Stuff. So Samsung, um, even when you set your privacy <laughs> settings. <laughs> People in the chat. <laughs> well, uh, even when you set your privacy settings to show your notifications on your lock screen before you log in. They changed it so that Gmail notifications don't show anymore. Ugh. So I actually have to unlock the phone. Like, I can see I have Gmail notifications, okay. but I can't see what they are. Okay, yeah. Well, you should have your phone encrypted so it doesn't show what they are anyways. No, I think, yeah, no, it's encrypted. But the, you should full, you full should make encryption. it so that it doesn't show anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. That I was should, like in the security should, meeting. Should, 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 should. But <laughs> the point is I get too many notifications for that, yeah. to be perfectly frank with you. If certain emails come through, you can get super screwed. Yeah, I guess that's does possible, it, Does it not just much. show the subject? Yeah, it just subject right? line. That's and like it? Maybe the first few words, but there's not much. There's some emails that can you can get screwed for. I don't get any words. like two-factor emails, though, like that. Because I think that's the kind you're thinking Mostly. Of. Yeah, no. Yeah, okay. No. Okay. Um, so, so, yeah, it, it's really frustrating. And, uh, yeah. So, anyway, I just haven't put my SIM back in the S8 yet. And I actually own two smartwatches. They both sit on my bedside table on their chargers. And whichever phone I happen to be using, I just grab either an Android Wear or an Apple Watch. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yep. Because <sighs> okay. I just... Don't care anymore what a at guy. this point. What I, a I am actually pretty psyched for the... You know what? Here. Let's blow through Ryzen 3. Oh! That's the opposite of first world problems. That's just like first world excess. <laughs> Sorry. I have a matching phone for... I have a matching watch for my phone. It's perfect all the time. You know what? It's not that different from people who have watches for their outfits. In fact, it's very different. That's I only need two watches. That's much more practical. That is not more practical. No, your way. Oh, oh, I yeah. see. No, I, was, I was admitting a minor amount of defeat. Yeah. Um, so anyway, AMD accidentally reveals Ryzen 3 details. It's quad-core without SMT. It'll use the same dies, Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7. Oh, that's surprising, actually. Luke, don't get paid enough. Even if I did, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Four cores distributed over two CCXs, but we saw that that wasn't a huge deal with the lower-end yeah. Ryzen 5s. Same cache structure as Ryzen 5 1400. Blah, 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 blah. TDP will still be the same 65 watt. But as we know, the TDP ratings for CPUs, like Intel rates... All of their HEDT yeah. chips, like 130 watts. Yeah. Clearly, the ones with twice as many cores clearly consume more power. Yeah. Clearly. So there's that. So it's just like blanket statement, whole areas. Hmm? Um, yeah, I had wanted to chat about. Oh, yeah, you know what? 
Well, do you want to do this first or that? Why don't we do that? Let's do that. Okay. Okay. I realize what we're saying right now is very cryptic, but this is important. Yep. If you are not already on float plane, this is the week. Well, other than like a scrapyard wars. Other than wars scrapyard week. wars. Because unlike scrapyard wars, where we have one piece of content that like half of our community cannot wait to watch, we have four pieces of content right now that are behind the early access wall on float plane that are freaking unreal, but they'll all be coming uh, sometime in the next week. So if you I've care watched at all, all of them, and I don't normally watch our videos even that often. <laughs> well, okay, because wow, I hear dick. about everything that's wow, going dick. on, and I'll like talk to the writer that's working on it and know their conclusions okay. and stuff. Wow, dick. I'm just saying. Okay, so LTT video. Exposing Dead Mouse's studio. Spoiler, he's a huge geek. This isn't even an LTT video, but do cell phones actually cause cancer? It was an entertaining tech wiki to make. You probably know the answer, I kind of hope, but like, it's it's a good thing to send to people. To Not go. everybody does, or we wouldn't have made the video. Fair. Um, LTT, unboxing a quantum computer. That was very cool. Um, that was awesome. So was the Dead Mouse one. Those were both really awesome. LTT, the most important iPad video in years, which actually got lost in translation. It's supposed to be the most important iPad in years. But that's okay. We'll figure that out. Also, there's a giraffe in the video, which is why it says gone wild. See, we're yes. all about clickbait. Yes. That's true. Yeah. Uh, LTT, the, the ultimate the... RGB build guide. Yes. yes. Build guides are back in a real way. Just to, okay, okay. This one I'll tease. Uh, class I distinction. I didn't know you could do that. I'm sorry. I didn't even know you could do it. You didn't in, like, know you could do that. Preview. Check out this intro. This is very cool. Yeah. The best part is, can you identify all the people? I can tell who some of them are. Except for when they're running by. Like, That's I know, James. Yeah, that was very obvious. Yeah. I can identify everyone except for when they're all running by all at once. Anyway. Then it gets messy. That's a great video. LTT, can you plasti dip a whole PC inside and out? LTT, unboxing Canada's biggest supercomputer. Um, yeah. LTT, can you plasti dip a whole PC? Is actually really funny. Yeah. So next week is going to be ridiculous because many of these projects were things that we've been working on for weeks and or months. And they just all kind of came together at the same time. In fact, if I was like in charge of programming here, I might not have necessarily, like I might have tried to find other sort of, I don't want to say crappier stuff, but yeah, <laughs> less expensive content to produce to, <laughs> to like space things out a little bit. Um, but if you guys want to join the float playing club, um, basically I the way it, to I do it, it, you got the link, you post it in the chat. Yeah. Do you, yeah, okay, good, LTT bots got that. Now's kind of the time to do it, and uh, yeah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be a good time over on Floatplane right now. If you wanna binge watch all that stuff, you're gonna, be, you're gonna like it. Um, okay, so Apple, moving on to news. This was posted by WM Groom AK on the forum, and the original article is from Engadget. It looks like Vivo? What? Vivo. Oh, that's what happened there. What? Beats Apple to an under-display fingerprint scanner. But they say that uh, the technology still has a way to go. I mean, that's how it sometimes is, where people are like, yeah, Apple never invented anything. Whereas a lot of the time, Apple doesn't invent it. They just kind of come along and use it when, when it's actually mature enough. Yeah, to be clear, it's a, it's a uh, Qualcomm technology. Yeah. Um, so this is an ultrasonic fingerprint solution offering integration beneath OLED displays up to 1.2 millimeters thick. Like that's pretty thick. That's for, a fair amount. Yeah. For an OLED, um, as well as aluminum even. That's freaking cool. That's pretty crazy. Like if the whole phone, imagine this, if you could have like, if you could have like, uh, just to unlock your phone is like easy, like it's just one. And then to access your encrypted folder, you have to put like all five fingers on it, or you have to like, can you imagine that? That would be pretty cool. So if you had like, you could have like the, the fingerprint down here, mm -hmm. and then all, like all four fingers on the back have to engage. Yes. That'd be pretty neat. I would love that. It'd have to be really accurate for that. First gen stuff's not gonna have that, yeah, but that's yeah. the kind of stuff I'd love to see in the future. 
Um, apparently it works even when the device is immersed in water, yeah. which is a huge problem with existing fingerprint sensors. And it tolerates- To be fair, not, not because you're like swimming with your phone all the time. Yeah. But like if it's raining or something like that, if it's a little bit wet, it can yeah. be really annoying. Or like if you sweat as much as I do. I mean, like sports, not just in general. Like I'm not, I'm not sweaty right now. I mean, I touched your shirt, so I could be as sweaty as, you know. Yeah, he's good. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> scientific test. Very scientific test. Oh, that was, I have problems that was really with, awkward. <laughs> I have problems with fingerprint scanners, though, um, because I have, as you know, annoyingly sweaty hands. You're not nearly as bad as when I met you. Yeah. When I met you, it it's was like full-on hyperhydrosis. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it has gotten a little bit better. Like, um, I would go out of my way to like not touch him. Like when I shook hands at his interview, I was just like, Ooh, can I hire this guy? I also used to like, like if I went on a, let's get personal here for a second. If I went on a date with someone, I would like avoid that. You would avoid hand holding, so you yeah. would just straight grab her by the. I do like arm <laughs> over, or <laughs> I don't go. No, I don't go Trump style with that. But I'd try to go like arm over shoulders, or like yeah. like something. I would even do the like joking arm in arm. We're being funny, old school thing. Wow, that's cringe, dude. Well, I would do it as a joke, to be clear. But oh. I would do that for like a couple seconds to try to show like I'm not being standoffish, but also I'm going to do this as a joke and then stop because I don't want to hold your hand. Wow. Because I was like, yeah, it's pretty gnarly. It's 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 mostly fine now. Okay. Yeah. Um Yeah, how's got it, it going? So anyway, Vivo's <laughs> X Play 6 demonstrated the technology. The demo started off with a fingerprint registration process that requested blah blah blah, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Then the user would be able to unlock the phone by touching the spot where they did the setup process or <laughs> somewhere else. Um, so, fingerprint recognition speed in this implementation is slower than the near instantaneous unlock we expect from normal fingerprint scanners, about a second between the first touch and entering the home screen. But they said the same tech could be applied across the entire screen. Oh, wait, no, hold on. Fingerprint. Was, oh, yeah. So they touched a different area just above the old fingerprint button. Um, so instead, they might eventually cover just the bottom half of the screen rather than the whole screen um, to save cost and, yeah. Same tech shown on the back of the phone's body, allowing it to be unlocked even when placed in water. Pretty freaking like cool. Yeah. yeah. I really like, like, I very much like the fingerprint unlock on the back of the Pixel. I'm a huge fan of that. Um, Are we going into this? Yeah, I don't know. Should we, or is it just boring? I want to talk about Ethereum mining. Okay, uh, this yeah. is a really quick one, but yeah. this was uh, posted on Futurism, and the original post on the forum was Ginger137. And the headline kind of says it all. There's not, not a whole lot more to say at this point. Ethereum could be using more than an entire country's worth of electricity. Now, of course, we don't mean, like, China or the U.S. or whatever. Um, oh, hi, guys. <laughs> but um, I think the, the country that we were talking about was... Da, 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 oh, a small Cyprus? country. Cyprus. Uh, so a bit more than what's consumed by the island of Cyprus. So 4.2 terawatt hours. <laughs> wow. That's pretty insane. Uh. So one major reason for this is the power-hungry graphics cards that are involved, but this might not be the case for long. Ethereum has plans to move away from its existing energy-intensive mining algorithms. So there you go. I wonder what that means for people's hardware. If it's just an algorithm thing, like, will that rebalance what is better at it? It means a lot of cheap 580s on the uh, on eBay. <laughs> Hopefully, because on honestly, I was talking to someone the other day. Buying a computer right now kind of sucks. Holy crap! It's a great time to buy a CPU. Yeah, but okay, but on the counter argument, and people are gonna hate me for this, but it's kind of rough to get into PC gaming right now. And I actually see a lot of people going like, okay, well, the graphics card that I want is gonna cost more than the freaking console. Yep. And like, it's hard to justify. Yep. It's genuinely a little bit hard to justify, and just because the graphics cards are so expensive. And if I'm AMD, like I, I certainly want to sell graphics cards for as much as I can. Of course, why not? 
or NVIDIA for that matter, although NVIDIA has been a little less popular on the whole Ethereum mining side of things. And like I've seen some stuff where people are trying to snipe out stores because certain stores aren't increasing yep. their prices because they're just trying to go for MSRP. And, and RAM too, there's a worldwide DRAM shortage that's expected to last well into next year. It's great for companies like Corsair, because it's hilarious. Like RAM makers like Corsair and Kingston, where they, they buy modules and then sell them, uh, it's great for them because as much as it's frustrating for them to not be able to get as much allocation as they'd like to sell, their margin on a product like that is kind of set because there's a lot of competitors out there and everybody's kind of in that 7 to 12% range, pretty much, give or take. But even though they're selling less, what they do sell hits their, um, hits their revenue numbers a lot harder. So they're doing more revenue and making 10%, let's say, on a $50 transaction yeah, yeah. versus making 10% on a $100 transaction, having to do all the same fixed cost things. So the, Transport, the processing fee, marketing, transportation, marketing, uh, packaging. Yeah. Hey, that's great for them. <laughs> yeah. um, speaking of the memory business, R.I.P. Lexar Memory Cards. This was posted by Shutterboy on the forum. The original article here is from Petapixel. But Crucial, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, Micron, parent company of Crucial and Lexar, um, Micron just kind of went, yeah, you know what? Um, compared to the lucrative business of selling Flash to companies like Amazon and Google, um, selling like SD cards is a fool's errand due to those low margins and low volumes. All that packaging and all that marketing involved in what? This tiny transaction? This is stupid. So they're just like, forget it. And they are shutting down their removable storage retail business. I hope they sh don't shut down Crucial because their Facebook page is hilarious. Other products that are being killed off include USB flash drives, memory card readers, and storage drives, yeah. which honestly, I'm kind of not stoked on because the only pro-grade card readers that we could find yeah. are yeah. those Lexar ones that we're using we our ingestations. We scoop up a few. I'm not even kidding. We, we might even do that. Yeah. Although I did run into someone at Computex that's making something that looks really pro and that has SSD and red mag versions as well. Ooh. They're like rack mount and you can oh, and they're wow. modular. So I'll look into those. They run off Thunderbolt too and our ingestations are Thunderbolt. That's pretty sick. So we'll see. Yeah. yeah. But if that doesn't pan out or if that product sucks, <laughs> Lexar is all I kind of got. Um, but the decision was made as part of the company's ongoing efforts to focus on its increasing opportunities in higher value markets and channels. <laughs> so basically, like Lexar products, <laughs> suck it. <laughs> uh, they are exploring opportunities to sell all or part of the Lexar business, but what that means is basically that Lexar won't be Lexar. Yeah. In much the same way that the Sharp is trying to get their brand back in North America because they're actually suing over Hisense. I believe it's Hisense? I'm gonna double check before I like disparage a brand. Um, Sharp, Hisense, lawsuit, I think. Yeah, yeah, Sharp saying that Hisense's shoddily manufactured TVs are hurting their brand image. What? Even though they were the ones who sold the business unit to Hisense. They sold it. Can they do anything about that? I don't know, but it explains. You know how we go to CES and we're like, what the heck is Hisense? Yes, yeah. Why are they even here? Yeah. Now I finally get it. Yes. Um, what else What else we got for this week? There's... Not a ton. There's that weird Canada thing, which might affect other people, so I don't know. We might want to talk about that. There's the tech power-up thing. I'm wondering oh. on your opinion on that, actually. Okay, I'm sorry. I really haven't looked into oh, this. Oh, and there's um, it's there's not a ton to look into it. You can look into it okay. really quick. So, um, should I start on it? Sure. Having not read it? Yeah. Uh, it was posted on the forum by Eyes Can't See Over 24 FPS, and that was the only way wow. you were going to get me to say those words all together in that order. Very, very funny. You know that's going to get clipped. You gigantic troll. Like, really tightly clipped. I know. Um, and the original article here is from delittedtech.com, which I've actually never heard of. What's I mean, delittedtech.com? I don't know. Wow, this looks like a wow. very small site. And I'm, I'm not hating or anything, um, but basically the controversy 
is over a tech power-up article that appeared to be an article anyway, that was a comparison between AMD's Radeon RX 560 and Nvidia's GTX 1050, but that was actually an AMD ad. The article reads like a review with no disclaimers within the article itself that it comes from AMD or is sponsored by AMD. The only ad markers on the page were advertorial by AMD off to the side on the top right and the author being named advertorial. The article was posted directly in the review section of the site. Our forum members apparently disagree as to whether or not Okay. AMD crossed the line. I don't know why it wasn't linked, but here's the actual thing. If you okay, want to so go let's there. pull up. Let's pull up the article here. This does look like an so, article. So they're sponsored right there. Yeah. Advertorial by AMD. Okay, this might be. Uh, this looks like it's been updated a little bit. This might be updated. Huh. When I first saw this, I, I didn't check for each individual location, but when I first saw this, I was not... Oh, it says sponsored right sponsored there, too. Sponsored content by AMD. Okay, okay. It looks like a few things have been added. Huh. Interesting. So did they run in their its own current, benchmarks? In its current state, what do, you, what do you think about the transparency? Okay, so... In its current state. The deleted text site doesn't seem to have... Huh. Oh, I think there's a picture on there, actually. So, yeah, advertorial by AMD above the... Here, let's go uh, Let's go over to deleted tech for a second here and show what it used to you look like. You can just move to my... Oh, no, mine's screwed. Yeah, yours yeah, is okay. screwed up right now. Sorry. So you're going to want to... Is it uh, this one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here's what it used to look like. The uh, the writer was advertorial. It didn't say sponsored under the 560 it logo. It didn't thing. say sponsored under the logo here. And it said introduction as though it was an introduction to something. Yeah. But it did say advertorial by MD over on the right. So it wasn't like impossible to figure out what it was, but. I think the word advertorial is um, a little misleading. Because in my mind, an advertorial... Okay, so it's like edutainment, right? Yeah. It's inherently educational it and like entertaining. It sounds like advert and tutorial. And it's not a tutorial. This isn't a tutorial at all. Here, let's read it. We'll read it together. It's not like how to use AMD graphics yeah. cards. Advertorial by AMD. Last year, AMD introduced the first Polaris generation of GPUs. With it, AMD delivered many new features along with great performance in the latest games and greatly improved efficiency. Like, that is not a tutorial. Uh, um, be it eSports or AAA titles. Best value for the money at around 100 euros. Consistently smooth animation in popular games at 1080. Avoids performance pitfalls caused by running out of video memory due to 4 gig models being available. Okay, none of that's a tutorial. Oh. For only around 100 euros, the Radeon RX 560 outperforms the competition at this price point while showing the significant difference of upgrading from a previous generation. Is this their own benchmarks? So that's honestly where, that's that's the one that I don't like. Um, Radeon Chill, hold There's on, no hold on. Tell. Radeon Chill saves power during games. It does this in these kinds of titles. There is no tutorial. Oh, editorial, not tutorial. Editorial? Is it? Interesting. Good call, Twitch chat. Okay. I did not know that. I always thought that an advertorial was an ad that was, like, how to use it. I thought it was, which too. Which is what I think an advertorial should be, by the way, because I have no problem with that. In fact, that's something Me that either. I've totally been doing for that. years. Is like, here's how to water cool your computer. So brought to you by some parts that you can use to do that, but but all of these things I'm saying still apply to other stuff. An advertorial, the like proper definition is a newspaper or magazine advertisement, don't worry too much about that, giving information about a product in the style of an editorial or objective journalistic article. Okay. So that's actually fairly transparent. Okay. All right, fine. I don't like... Yeah. Hmm. So there's a couple things here. Number one is I think they're going to need to change the title. Apparently it says testing done by AMD in the last paragraph. Yeah. I so think it should say that on the chart. I think the testing shouldn't be done by AMD. 
that for too. one thing. Um, so even when we do, so we've actually done a, um, here, the closest thing that we've done was, uh, the te okay, guys, the testing done by AMD should be on the chart. Here. This is the closest thing we've done, actually, with AMD. Oh, unskippable ads. We have unskippable ads? They enable after a while, so they're on our, um, our back catalog. Oh. Do we yeah. even do that? No, it's something that our MCN does automatically. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Can you build a 4K gaming PC for under $1,000? Oh, for some reason, we're not looking at the beginning of it. So we say something, 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 something. AMD challenged us to do this. Blah, blah, blah. Hold on. Here we go. Is this the sponsored by AMD call out? No, I don't think so. Um, but we, this, was, uh, this was actually before some of those guidelines came into place. And we, uh, let me see, where else? Anyway, I say it either two or three times in the video verbally. Um, when we get to the benchmarks, because AMD's argument to us to, for doing this piece was that you can play popular esports titles at 60 FPS on their affordable for, at 4K on their affordable all AMD machine. We ran these benchmarks ourselves. And we told them we're not doing this video unless we can validate this ourselves. Yeah. And that would have meant not taking the budget. That happened. Letting AMD run their own benchmarks, yes, I think strictly speaking, that does make it exactly as much of an advertorial then as just an opinion. But an editorial, again, and maybe you can hear, wanna be my definition man for a sure. second here? Yeah. Editorial, my understanding means opinion and facts graphs and charts are not opinions. A newspaper article written by or on behalf of an editor that gives an opinion on a topical issue. So really that's where the line gets crossed for me because the disclosure is not quite good enough. Uh, it should be in the title, uh, sponsored. Should be in the actual title of the article uh, according to like FTC guidelines, like that actually needs to get done. Um, the, all of this stuff is quite a bit better now, advertorial by AMD, but in my opinion, these graphs should have either been run by Tech Power Up or they shouldn't be here. And it yeah. should just be an opinion At piece. the very least, in my opinion, it needs to be very clear on the graphs that these are graphs from the company. And then, personally, that would just make me not care and I'd move on. People are saying the graphs serve as evidence for the opinion of the author, but that's exactly it. Then it isn't an editorial then it's not an opinion. You can't say, in my opinion, this graphics card runs faster when you actually have fact. I mean, it's the whole blurry line between facts and opinion these days. But once it's been quantitatively measured in a way that is reproducible and defensible and adheres to the scientific method, once it's quantified, it isn't an opinion anymore. And a graph inherently suggests that it has been quantified. People yeah. are saying, but AMD is the author. That's fine, but it still isn't an editorial and therefore isn't an advertorial. So, yeah. Um, huh. Okay. I mean, as long as it's disclosed, it's sort of up to them and their relationship with their viewers. Uh, for our part, we do do sponsored content. We've done sponsored content for years. We say when it's sponsored content. I would love to say that we've never used anyone's numbers. We've shown slides with a manufacturer's numbers. Generally speaking, that would be before we get an opportunity to show our own numbers, like at a launch event or when it's being first unveiled at CES, for example. Yeah, um, but then it's usually clearly stated that that's their numbers. But it's clearly stated that I it is someone else's numbers. Not quite, but probably almost every time that I've done that, I've been like, but we'll have to see when we can get it back into the office for testing of our own. Well, I mean, with over 3,000 videos uploaded, I don't want to say we've never it's shown anybody to, else's numbers, yeah. but. Generally speaking, that's where we draw our line, clear disclosure and running our own validation against the claims of the manufacturer. Yeah. In this case, I can't speak to their due diligence uh, behind the scenes, except to say that this graph 
Doesn't look like it was produced by them. It looks like it was produced by AMD. For all I know, they ran the numbers. But I, I don't. Well, I no, don't it have says, a way of it says that. performance by AMD. Or oh, you know, that's right. It does, yeah. down at the very bottom. Yeah. Uh, testing done by AMD Performance Labs, March 1st, 2017, using a Core i7 6700K. Oh boy. Um, yeah. So I'm not going to say, look, sponsored content shouldn't exist. I'm just going to say it needs to be clearly disclosed. And for me personally, um, I'm very careful about any claims that are made in our publication that I couldn't stand behind, whether I was the one who ran the numbers or whether it was my idea or whether it was someone else's idea, um, even in sponsored content. And it's up to Tech Power Up to manage their relationship with their audience and their trust with their audience um, in terms of how they want to proceed with this. There. Yeah. Interesting. One more topic? Um, I'm kind of done. Okay. Yeah, that's boring, that's boring. Oh, okay, this is kind of cool. There's pet, yeah. Yeah, Coaxial Gamer posted this on the forum original article from Overclock3D.net. Toshiba produces the world's first 4-bit per cell. So that's QLC, NAND flash memory. So the endurance on this stuff will suck. Um, like, we're talking a handful of write cycles compared to what SLC would have been capable of if it still existed. But um, great for write once, read many, many times kinds of applications because it will be really cheap. So we're talking capacities of up to 96 gigabytes of storage per die, allowing Toshiba to create a 1.5 terabyte SSD package with a 16 die stacked architecture. So they're going to demo it at the 2017 Flash Summit in August. Woo. Uh, there's X299 boards, bad VRM cooling. Oh yeah, that's a big sort of thing. I think we did tease that, so uh, yeah, uh, we should probably talk about it. I've seen this guy's videos before. I think you pronounce the channel Der Bauer. Yep, There's Der Bauer. I met him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I've he, good videos actually. But um, Der Bauer has posted a video uh, showing that the VRMs on an X299 board were reaching 100 degrees, and the single eight-pin connectors for the power supply can hit 60 degrees when overclocking the 10-core models. So here's Derbauer, good guy, pro overclocker. Yeah. Um, actually makes the Derbauer delitting tool, which he gave us one of, nice. which is pretty pretty sick. Yeah. Um, and he has some serious concerns about X299 and how much time the motherboard manufacturers had to work on their designs to make sure that they were cooled correctly. And not just that, but... Um, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, go watch his video. He does good stuff. But given that the motherboard manufacturers also got blindsided by any CPUs with a core count over 12, it's not just a matter of being rushed, but also a matter of not having enough information, potentially, to design a board that is actually capable of handling this. To be fair, he was testing with one of 10. Yes. The 10 core models. Yeah. But yeah. So, yeah. It, so it can't get any better. It can only get worse, yeah. is sort of the point. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's one more topic we can gloss over it a little bit, but I just oh, sure. want to give some people information on it. The so Amazon one? If there were... No. Oh, okay. Um, da, 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 da. Petya Ransomware. Oh, okay. Um, I do really want to give a call out for the guy on the forum that posted this thread. WM Groom AK has done a very very good job of keeping this up to date with really good article linking, really good quoting, really good updates, um, condensing big updates on other sites down into easy digestible things. So if you're interested in the world of viruses and hacking and ransomware and, and wipers and everything else, definitely go check out this thread. I just posted it in the chat. Awesome. Um, and there's a lot of crazy information in there. There's, there's been a, a bit of a developing story. Yeah, so you can maybe if we cover this now and someone watches the show in three days, it's not going to be up to date yeah, All our notes are wrong. And not because James is a bad person, but yeah. because it has literally all changed. It's been changing. Since he made his notes. So so, so go check out that thread. It's being updated. Like, it, it was last updated, like, slightly over an hour ago. Yeah. Like, after the show was even supposed to start, technically before the show started, but yeah. 
Um, it, it's, it's parading as ransomware. It's actually a wiper. Uh, apparently, the email account has been closed by the email hosting service that was hosting it. So even if you try to pay to get your thing back, they can't receive the email. So they're not going to be able to give you a key to unlock your device. Like, it's, it's, it's a mess right now. And if you're really interested in that stuff, I would check out that thread. It's, it's very well up to date. All right. It even includes like the Bitcoin wallet address that people are sending money to, so you can see like how right. much money they've made so far and everything. Like it's yeah, it's good. All right, so thanks for watching, guys, and uh, we will see you again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Bye. Bow, 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 bow. You're like out, out, right? Yeah. Okay. Wendell's <laughs> Oh okay. It doesn't matter it doesn't matter. I'm not trying to hide it. It's just Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs>